Hi, thanks for joining us again on Celebrating Act Two. As you can see, my business partner, Art Kirsch, and I are with the fabulous John Mariani of the Virtual Gourmet newsletter at johnandmariani.com. <laughs> Good morning, John. I have a question for you. Uh, I used to have a lot of clients on Wall Street, uh, uh, principally the big banks, uh, Chase Manhattan, uh, Merrill Lynch, uh, uh, brokerage side. And I always used to pass a, a restaurant called Delmonico's, which was this like uh, horseshoe or a curve front built on William Street or Beaver Street. And it was the place to go, or one of certainly the places to go for uh, a high-end business lunch. Is that still around? What's going on with Delmonico's? You betcha. Um, <clears throat> better than ever. Um, it's been closed a couple of times and it's... Uh, longevity but um, yeah the story goes like this it first of all it is the oldest restaurant in america um and by the term restaurant <clears throat> i mean a place that serves a full meal where you sit down at your table before 1837 that did not exist and all the merchants at that time would either go to a tavern which is uh you eat whatever they throw onto the table <clears throat> have some beer or something, or you dine outside in nice weather under the tree. You got the sandwich or something. Delmonico's was a self-contained unit. It was opened by a, a Swiss uh, sea captain and his brother. His name was John Delmonico. And uh, <clears throat> he decided first to open a pastry shop. And then it became very, very popular. So he opened a restaurant of a kind that they had had in Paris for some years. After the French Revolution, they opened restaurants, as I described them. Um, you got a bill of fare, you got a menu, and so forth. And <clears throat> it was a big hit right from the start. Uh, consequently, they were so successful, they opened Delmonico's going, <coughs> excuse me, uptown. <coughs> uh, the current one is on B. Ah, damn it, this is <coughs> maddening. <clears throat> I haven't coughed in 24 hours, guys, as I swear to you. But it's because I take the silly pill. All right. Try yes. the three shot again and pick it up, John, with consequently they opened uptown. Okay. <clears throat> consequently, they opened uptown. I think they opened five of them, went all the way up to where Madison Square Garden is now. And all of them got bigger and bigger and <clears throat> more lavish. And I mean, just everybody who was anybody made it to Monaco. So uh, every president, um, Samuel F. B. Morse sent the first telegraph from uh, with a telegram from Del Monaco's dining room across the Atlantic. It was the first restaurant mm -hmm. <clears throat> to allow women to dine alone or without men companionship which uh, upsets a lot of the men for obvious reasons because they were bringing their mistresses there and did not want their wives to uh, see them. Um, it introduced so many dishes that are still around today, the Delmonico steak, which is a very, very large uh, sirloin, like 18, 20 ounces, Delmonico potatoes, uh, the um, baked Alaska, uh, so many other dishes, um, lobster Newburgh, <clears throat> which was originally called Lobster Winberg after a customer, but Delmonico got <clears throat> angry with the customer and threw him out and renamed it Newburgh. Um, and throughout the 19th century and well into the 20th century, it was a model for every big deal restaurant, <clears throat> including in uh, New Orleans, um, which opened in 1840, uh, Antoine's, which was the biggest deal south of the Mason-Dixon line by, by far. Um, and then came the, the um, prohibition. Well, that just shuttered so many of these restaurants because you couldn't get a drink there. And <clears throat> because they were so public, they were not speakeasies. So people were going to the speakeasies, which are pretty rum, crummy places, um, and they weren't going to get Delmonico's to drink uh, the seltzer water. Okay. So they 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 went on and they closed for a while and pro you know prohibition was there till 1932. <clears throat> they came back strong even during World War II. They closed again in, for COVID. So they have just reopened post COVID in the last year. <clears throat> Owned uh, so many New York restaurants all these days by Eastern Europeans, very very hardworking guys, who restored the premises. Um, 
not to what they were in the 19th century, uh, but the, the facade on Beaver Street is exactly the same as it was when it opened, which was the was the second incarnation of Delmonico's. These glorious pillars from Palermo, marble pillars, and you go into this grand dining room, and there are murals of all the famous people who dined there. Everybody from Cary Grant and Myrna Loy to just everybody, and the the service is old school, beautifully set tables. Um, <clears throat> fortunately, they have no dress code, so. Uh, it was disappointing to be sitting at the next table over from a just a slob in a T-shirt and car wow. pants or something. That's not uncommon today, is it? <laughs> uh, no, it's not. And, uh, you know, I've railed about this before and I will continue to do so. Anyway, it, it's reopened. It's better than ever. They have all those dishes on the menu that I just mentioned mm -hmm. as, well as newer dishes. They have a, an Asian-American chef, as a matter of fact, which is not unusual these days either. Terrific wine list, uh, a beautiful, oh, Delmonico's was the first restaurant anywhere to have both a revolving door, this was back in the 1830s, and a woman cashier up front. <laughs> it's a very racy thing to do. Well, you will we'll meet, uh, as you walk in, the hostess or hostesses are these beautiful Eastern European girls from, you know, Montenegro and Slovenia. They're all tall and gorgeous and look like Elizabeth Debicki. So and and couldn't be more more charming. And uh, in a lot of restaurants <clears throat> still to this day uh, that are very very popular, you'll get not so much the cold shoulder as well. It's going to be another twenty minutes with where your table, uh, but not at the Monaco. So I highly recommend it. Uh, it's down on Beaver Street, way 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 down. It's if you like history, if you like good food, old style service, uh, Del Monaco has been doing the trick since uh, the 1830s. All right, I insist the next time Art and I are in New York, you're going to meet us at Del Monaco's. Fortunately, neither of uh, both of you never show up together, so that won't cost me very much. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you're off the hook for a while anyway. John, thank you so much. Uh, let's not forget, everybody, that you can. Uh, Subscribe to John Mariani's virtual gourmet newsletter for yes. free, mind you, uh, by going to johnmariani.com and you. signing up and reading and reading all his great articles about food, wine, and travel. So, uh, yes. of course, we'd like you to subscribe to Celebrating Act Two as well. See you soon. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.